for joining us here today on Hill Country Happenings News Minutes. USA Dance Charter 6125 is holding a Christmas party on December the 20th. Now, everyone is invited if you're a member or a non-member. Now, non-members are $12 for adults and $7 for students. And if you're a member, it's $10 for adults and $5 for students. This is going to be held at the community center over on Wilson Avenue. They'll have dancing and they're going to have demonstrations. And you don't need a partner to come because they'll have plenty of people there that will dance with you. Bring your dancing shoes and bring your energy because they want you to dance all night. Now it starts at 6 o'clock and all through the night they're going to have different demonstrations of dances. And who knows, they might stop and do a a couple of little teaching steps so that you can expand your experience. They hope you'll come. Now, it's December the 20th at 6 p.m. at the Community Center. Come, dance the night away. Now, in North Pontotoc this week, they had a poetry contest. The librarian and the English teacher got together, and they had a read out loud on the poetry. The, right here is the pictures of the winners, and congratulations. They're so excited to be able to do this, to give the students the opportunity to do some original works and to do some readings of some poetry that has already been written. Congratulations. The Mississippi State Board of Education is seeking applicants from rising high school juniors who wish to serve as junior student representatives to the state board start starting in the 20. 2021 school year. The SBE student representative program includes one high school junior and one high school senior who serves as non-voting SBE members and provides input on policy decisions that affect Mississippi public schools. The current junior SBE representative, Omar Jamil, is of DeSoto County Schools, will serve as a senior representative for the 2020-2021 school year. If you would like to be considered for this, please visit the website and fill out an application. We have lots, lots of bright high schoolers in this area. Now, a groundbreaking consent degree approved today by the United States District Court for the Southern District of Mississippi will help to prevent the Madison County Sheriff's Department from engaging in racially motivated policing practices that have historically been their hallmark. The class action lawsuit initially filed by the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU of Mississippi, and the law firm of Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett aimed to challenge Madison County's unconstitutional policing tactics. The approved decree implements several reforms to existing procedures and includes new policies that reform the pedestrian stops and checkpoints of the MCSD. To ensure these policies are implemented, the Madison County Sheriffs are required to train their deputies in a proper practice and evaluate their performances. The Madison County Sheriff's Department will also be required to collect and maintain data on checkpoints and pedestrian stops subject to verification by Community Oversight Board and the plaintiff's attorneys. In Washington, D.C. this week, in an effort to help working families become homeowners, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, awarded $10 million in grants to four nonprofit housing organizations, which will at least create 538 affordable homes for low-income families and individuals. Funded through the HUD Self-Help Ownership Opportunity Program, or SHOP, these grants, along with the labor contributions from home buyers and volunteers, will significantly lower the cost of construction, thus making the home ownership a reality for families who otherwise would not be able to afford to buy a home. These nonprofits receiving grants are making a positive impact on communities across the country through the strong partnerships they have formed between the public and private sectors, said David C. Wolf Jr., HUD Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for Community Planning and Development. These grants, in conjunction with volunteer work and private donations, will help make the dream of ownership a reality for more families. If you're interested in checking into this program, please check out their website.
And speaking of charities, did you know that Delbert Hoseman's Secretary of State office is where you need to go to check out to see if a place that you're donating to is legitimate? Mississippi's donating to those in need this holiday season can research critical financial and information about charities on the Secretary of State's website. Our citizens are some of the most giving in the nation, and many choose to donate at this time of year, said the Secretary of State. We want to be a resource to make sure those generous donations reach those who need them and are not subject to fraud. Consumer organizations recommend at least 65% of the charity's total expenses be spent on program activities directly related to the charity's purpose. Charities soliciting funds in Mississippi must be registered with the Secretary of State's office. Each year, the agency publishes a report of charitable organizations in Mississippi. The report outlines the financial information of charities registered in the state, including the percentage of charitable funds actually spent by the charity to the cause that they have said they would. Now you can go to the Secretary of State's website and check out the list of charities that you might want to give to. And don't forget that there are charities here close to home that you can give to. There's the Angel Tree, there is Good Samaritans, they're sharing at Christmas with the New Albany Gazette. There are many opportunities where you can give. There are clothes closets all around that will accept donations all year round. There's a food pantry that some of the churches have. There are all kinds of ways. And one that's coming up in this area that you can give to, including your time, will be on December the 14th. Now that's going to be at the New Albany Middle School and it is the community dinner. It starts at 11 o'clock, but the cooking will start a lot earlier. Now if you're interested, please call the middle school here in New Albany and ask how you can get in touch with someone about the upcoming dinner. We hope to see you there. Hill Country Network will be there. We'll be helping serve. We'll be recording, talking to the kids. Hey, and Santa's going to be there, so we're going to have pictures with Santa. Here's the latest on the lettuce scare. Now, there is E. coli in the lettuce. They've proven this. And this is the latest from the CDC. They continue to advise consumers and retailers not to eat, sell, or serve lettuce grown in Salianas, California, growing region. Since the last update on November the 22nd, an additional 27 ill people have been recorded, bringing the total to 67 cases in 19 states. A total of 39 hospitalizations have been reported. Six people have developed a syndrome that goes along with this, a type of kidney failure. No deaths have been reported yet, thank goodness. Now, the laboratory and evidence collected to date indicated the romaine lettuce from the California growing region may be contaminated with the coli, and it's what's making people sick. Now, this is a rapidly evolving investigation, and the CDC will provide more information as it becomes available. Applications are being accepted on the Dora Welty 2020 Research Fellowship at Fellowship established by the Adora Welty Foundation and the Department of Archives and History. The $2,000 fellowship will be awarded to the graduate student for research within the department of the Adora Welty Collection. The fellowship seeks to nurture scholars at the beginning of their academic careers in order to increase their lifelong interest in and promote continued academic and public appreciation of Eudora Welty's life and works. This is the 10th consecutive year the Eudora Welty Foundation has funded this award, said David Pelcher, director of the MDAH Archives and Record Services. Their generosity makes it possible for yet another highly qualified fellow to travel to the state archives and use these one-of-a-kind materials. Now, the money may be used for travel, housing, and other expenses during the fellow's two weeks minimum stay in Jackson. Now, for more information, you can go to the website, and the deadline to apply is February the 28th, 2020. We hope that some of our area students will be interested in this and go and apply. On November the 22nd, 
the first grade students of the New Albany Elementary School System had the opportunity to visit the New Albany School of Career and Technical Education building. The field trip provided opportunities for them to gain more awareness about potential careers, including marketing, business, health science, digital merchandising, early childhood education, STEM and robots, culinary arts, automotive technology, construction, and agriculture. Students also learned about the educational opportunities they will have when they get to the high school, when they become high school students. Now, we hope you had a chance to watch the parade. We'll be showing it off and on during the whole month of December, probably on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock, most definitely, but there might be surprises during the week. We hope that you'll go to our website and click on the box there. You can watch the parade anytime you want to or call your families and friends and ask them to go and watch the parade. They have the opportunity. We had a lot of fun filming the parade. Also, you'll be able to see the Myrtle Parade. Myrtle's Town Parade was on December the 7th and Hill Country Network was there to record it. We have the recordings on our website soon and we will be having the different parades that will send us in their information. We'll have blocks up there for them. If there is an event coming up that you would like for Hill Country Network to come and film, please let us know. We'll definitely talk to you about it. Now, thank you for joining us here today on Hill Country Happenings News Minutes. Be sure to go to all of our social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Like our Facebook page because if you had been on our Facebook during the parade last Tuesday night, you would have seen a live Facebook Live event with the parade. We also had immediately on there the winners of the parade. We hope you'll go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, and that way you will not miss any of our original programs. Christmas season is a time where men open their hearts a Christmas season is a time when people open their hearts to others when they normally don't do it throughout the year, although they should. And so we ask you to please, if you know of someone in need, give generously. If you're in need, please reach out for help. We are Americans, we are united, and we in the South just love you. We hope that you will join us for the rest of the show, and we hope you have a wonderful week. Well, Hope, we have the winners of the parade. Exciting. Are you Exciting. ready to announce Drop this? Row. And just remember, if you are a winner, you need to go by the Main Street office and pick up your check. Yes. Come yes. get your money. Okay, so first category. Youth winner, N.A. Shockers. Congratulations. The Con rowdy bunch. Yes, yeah. yes. They deserved it. And also, they didn't wear coats. So That's right. I mean... It's pretty, it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, they're tough. Yeah, they're very tough. Um, in the adult category, I'm going to let you pronounce this one. Max Lohmeyer in his 1949 Chevy truck. Awesome. Great looking truck. Um, for the business category, the winner I'm was super psyched yes, about this one. My grandbaby was on you there. Say it then. Rainbow Learning Center. Yay! Yay! And for the church category, the Watson winner was Watson Grove. Yeah, that Watson snow Grove. was fabulous yeah yeah i want some snow i mean if you bring snow to the parade you've got you've got it you've got, you got it. the vote i mean people you just got to step it up you know um the civic group the girl scouts of new albany congratulations so congratulations remember, to all these winners don't forget to pick money. up your checks come get your money congrats <laughs> For those of you planning to travel west on 178 toward Memphis from New Albany, you need to take the exit at Myrtle. The road is closed east of Hickory Flat.
name's Mary Adams, and we're with Hidden Beauty Hair Salon in New Albany. Um, our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and appointment only on Saturday. Um, we'd love to see you come out. I'm Annie Kent, I'm also with these two girls, and um, we offer haircuts, collars, um, also we do manicures as well, waxes, and we would love to see y'all. And I'm Amanda Baird. <laughs>
the first time in 12 years. I didn't realize it had been that long. But, you know, we have to go by what price we can get and how much things cost. And the weather, of course, <coughs> plays a big factor in it. And this was the first time in 12 years. Robbie has been nice enough to paint me some pictures for my children because now they've got all these boys and girls, too, that like to ride cotton pickers. And they like the machines, and they like the horse powers. <laughs> so anyway, they're not like those, like nine, nine years old. And he's been helping Steve with the cotton, so the cotton has always been a part of my life. I've enjoyed this class a lot. It's gotten me out of my comfort zone, to say the least. But this was a, a little il illustration in a, a Christmas book I bought for our three grandsons when they were real little. Now, we've got a three, a seven-year-old, the youngest, a 12-year-old, and a 13-year-old. And I think the two oldest ones knew from day one uh, that Nana was a teacher and enjoyed reading to them and wanted them to read to her. And that was, honest to goodness, one of the few books that I could get that was short and sweet. And they would sit still long enough to, to listen to it. So this is just a memory of uh, time I spent with my three precious grandsons. I had so many memories that I, I knew about this class because Miss Ladine Goodrich had told me if we met at Hobby Lobby and she was getting the paint for her for her uh, story thing, and she told me about it, and I told her that I was in the next class. And so we ride in the wagons, me and my husband, and all the kids did, but you know, they're grown now, they have jobs, they don't get to do it. But, and they all had a horse. But before that, when, even when I was a young girl, I used to pick up airheads and stuff. And when one of my uncles was clearing off some land, and I had, I had, I have five kids, but two, like three of them were like 14 months apart. So when somebody found, when one of my cousins found um, a pipe in it, well, I just had to go down there, and that was before four wheelers and side by sides and stuff, which we have now because we still look for areas. But I carried two kids on a hip, on each hip, and I was pregnant with the other one. Because <laughs> I had to get down there, because I had to see what all I could find. And this was one of my first things that I found. It was a piece of pottery. and But I saved all my stuff, and I knew wherever I went that where all my stuff, you know, where it came from. So I guess when I had grandkids, I took one of my grandkids to see a reenactment they were having on Black Zion Road. Well, when I did, the neighbor, the neighbor's daughter, Miss uh, Martha Coleman from Pontoc, she's the curator at Pontoc Museum, she said, go home and get on your stuff and bring them back and let him look at them. So when he seen this, he was really, really excited about what I had found because it showed that the Chickasaw Indians had traded with people from Texas. But some, these are some of my best finds. Well, this, my, this bell, this Chickasaw bell, my uncle gave to me, and this airhead is a curved airhead. I've never seen a curved airhead. But these are some of my best finds. And me and my uncle, we still look, because both of us are at home. And 
Christmas for me, I mean, we have Christmas and stuff, but one of my sons is in the military, so when I have Christmas, my Christmas is when my two boys get to come home from living in Houston and living off in the military, that me and them get to go look for airheads. <laughs> shaped swirl on his sides and he paid us little mind that day but showed up a few weeks after we moved in and we named him Thornsby. As is their nature, Thornsby the cat continued to come and go at will for several months. He was friendly, allowed a certain amount of petting and killed a few pests to pay his way. His amount of time at the house slowly increased until he became <coughs> more or less our full-time cat. Two years later, my husband's job was suddenly relocated to Louisville, Mississippi, so we put the house up for sale by owner. Because we'd done a fair amount of remodeling, there was a good deal of curious traffic on the day of the open house. Several people knew Thornsby through a variety of aliases. <laughs> We've all known a cat like that. <laughs> One lady who said she lived about five or six miles away as the crow flies had known our cat for several years. <coughs> So late in August, moving day saw Thorns be tucked into a carrier along with the recently acquired stray kitten. The trip was about 165 miles over both narrow, winding country roads and busy four-lane highways. We crossed two sizable rivers, went through a variety of small towns. It took us hours. Thorns would lay around our new house, eating and sleeping. He seemed fine with the new living arrangements, but made no effort to explore the new neighborhood or the wooded area. And he got fat. On October 1st, Thornsby went missing. Four day, for days, we called and searched and had hoped he would miraculously reappear as he had so many times in Alabama, but he didn't. On Thanksgiving Day, there was a telephone call from the new owners of the farmhouse in Thornsby. 
Dorothy the cat had that day arrived in time to enjoy the holiday scraps. <laughs> it was thin and dirty and worn bloody paws for two months on the road, but it didn't matter to Dorothy. He was clear <coughs> where he wanted to be. Yeah. <laughs> their story you might want to. I see my mother-in-law didn't make it today. She was our oldest um, student. She did this uh, her home when she was growing up. She started it and uh, then she, she didn't want to finish it. And I thought, what do your grandchildren would want that? And she said, I was so poor it makes me sad to <laughs> think about those days. She was talking about her house being propped up on rocks and you know, when we look back at it, we don't necessarily have bad memories. We just think of it as a nostalgic time. But I talked her into finishing it, at least. And uh, But she she couldn't make it today. She's 92, and she didn't feel well. But uh, she did finish it, so one of the grandkids will get that. But this is Juanita Smith. <laughs> say that um, I looked up the definition of um, lifelong learning and it said it's the ongoing voluntary and this is the most important self-motivated pursuit of knowledge so create creativity takes courage and so y'all made, made an effort to come and do something new and I suspect that that's how you live your whole life by watching you because whatever we talked about, whatever challenge there was, you just did it. You just got the clay and did it. And um, I will never be honest if we keep doing that, if we keep thinking along those lines. So um, I just want to say that it was an honor for me to be a part of this, and uh, um, I appreciate you. Well, we appreciate you too. you're going to do and how you're going to do it, 
it all looks good on paper, but when it comes to actually putting your hands in the clay, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than you thought it might. So some of us didn't get finished, and some of us want to go back and do some more. And uh, so we hope that once the holidays are over, we can do that. I don't know if y'all remember Kent, my grandson, who made the whistle. He calls me every day and says, can I go make something? And uh, where did Miss Gail find my stuff? And he called me last night about 7.30. He said, I'm going to take all my stuff to school tomorrow. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, he's got cups and saucers and platters and stuff that he's made. And That's all. So I, I think that it might not be a, a good idea for him to take them to school yet. But um, there's a variety of our whistles we made. And if y'all have never tried to make a clay whistle, it is one of the most satisfying things. <laughs> <laughs> when it works, oh my goodness. We've got a lot of food and drink, and I want y'all to enjoy the camaraderie, and, um, and I want y'all to, when you're ready, to take your food. So tell me your name again. Kelsey Jones. What's your name? April Jones. April Kelsey. So, is this your first time to the Myrtle Parade? Yes. Okay. What are you hoping to see? Santa, I hope he'll be here. Santa. Santa. Y'all are here to see the parade. What are you hoping to see? Uh, lights. Lights? My sister. <laughs> Your sister, yeah. She's a cheerleader. We love you, Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your name? Carly. Carly? Kaylee. Ethan. Ethan? Lindsay. Samantha. Yeah, I you cool. Well, I hope y'all have fun. <laughs> Uh, Major Flat, Mississippi. We got four or five different groups of families with the kids on the back. We got three or four other side by side riding. Uh, we rode in the Potts Camp Parade two nights ago. We just out having fun. Welcome to the 5th Annual Myrtle Christmas Parade as we are getting ready for a big night here in Myrtle and uh, we've got, well, I've got a retired car salesman and a retired English teacher. That's right. And so... That's a pair, let me tell you. It, it really you, is a we've book got of Alan a Kalser book and Ms. Pat Hancock <laughs> with us and we're going to try to bring you the Christmas Parade as it comes through right in front of us here. So get ready. It's going to be a lot of fun. Guys, what do y'all think about Christmas parades? I love them. I love all the lights. Oh, uh, the yeah, as long as Santa Claus comes, that's that's all that matters. Well, he's usually right. at the end. Yeah. If he's not there, we got problems. Yeah, we got <laughs> hot chocolate tonight and cold oh. weather. This is we've good. We've got a good crowd well, gathering. And yes, a good crowd is getting ready. And uh, I think we've got uh, a, a lot of people I've noticed on the outskirts of town. I yeah. guess they're picking their spots. Well, probably so, yeah. where the parade will pass by. So. Yeah, so they don't want to get in a crowd so they can get out when they leave, I guess. That's I, right. I guess. That's but, a, you, but there's a lot of people here, like you said, and a lot more people coming in. Beulah Church is here serving free hot chocolate. Yes, so you got to get that hot chocolate. Take advantage of that. That's right. Yeah. It's good. I think I've got a cup of marshmallows. Or you need marshmallows <laughs> for your hot chocolate? i got, I got some oh, in there, okay. yeah. They've all, all right. melted, but they're good. 
Good deal. Good deal. And good, good piece of cake. Now go along with it. Well, that did put us right, right in the spirits. We're doing good. We'd be doing good. All right. So I hope everybody will uh, enjoy the Christmas parade. It's getting ready to start here in just a few moments. We do thank the uh, the town of Myrtle, the mayor, and the board of aldermen for getting this thing together and, and uh, making it happen. Lights on that thing. Uh, it's flashing all over the place. I see some decorative wreaths on the front. Oh, decorative wreaths. Looks very Christmassy. Got it all decked out. Myrtle Fire Department truck number four. If you get any kind of trouble, your leaves catch on fire, you know who to call. That's right, the Myrtle Fire Department. That's right. Hey, there they are. We appreciate them. Yes. Cheerleaders. And coming up next, cheerleaders on uh, Myrtle Fire Department. Another truck there with the cheerleaders up there. Chris hey, hey, cheerleaders. All of those. Here. Doing their cheer with yes. their pom poms. And our grand marshals. <laughs> Yay! Our grand marshals: Jeanette Thomas, Miss Caroline DeChristian, and Miss Florette Osberg. Let's wave to them. Some very nice ladies. Grand marshals. Very for this nice. Year's parade. Okay. All right. And the okay. town of Myrtle coming up next. Town of Myrtle. Our mayor, Michael Kennedy, and the board of aldermen. Dustin Raspberry, Mac McDonald, Cynthia Parks, Teresa Smith, and Sean Wigington. My goodness. Okay. Let's wave to them. Yes. Again, they got that side by side all decked out. <laughs> See what uh, helped us get this going here. I want to thank them for that. Hey. And then uh, coming up is Myrtle's most beautiful. As we see Maggie Moody. <laughs> Maggie Moody, let's wave. Hey, Maggie. Beautiful. Hey, Maggie. Hey. In that Oldsmobile convertible, that's my kind of car. Uh, and uh, hey. we have uh, Layla Ham coming up next. Layla. Oh, look at that. That is so cute. Oh, look at the yeah. back of the car. Oh, yes, all decorative there. <laughs> Layla Ham. These ladies like those Corvettes. Yes, Marisa we do. Foster coming up. Uh, one of uh, Myrtle's homecoming uh, queens are uh, queens there. Uh, one of the court, I guess you'd say. Yeah, I think she's one of the court. Yeah, Ramisha Foster, Myrtle Homecoming. Hey, she pretty. Hey. She's, she's holding, holding on there, I think. <laughs> she doesn't know where to smile or to turn loose. That's right. All looking dainty today, tonight. All right, that's Miss Ramisha Foster there. Hello, Permisha. There's that smile. Oh, there it comes. <laughs> Very right. pretty. Coming up next, we've got uh, West Union Fire Department, Jeremy Howell. Looking dapper there, got it all cleaned up. Again, Very they look parade. festive even if they don't have a wreath on there with all the blinking lights and Coming the whistles up. and bells. Yeah, they got it all, got it, the lights flashing. Uh, as you said, if you need leaves or something, yeah. fire, that's who you need to call, the fire yeah. department, the West Union Fire Department. Or even a house. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at oh, this. Yes. Coming up next. I think this is somebody you know, I believe right? I know these people, <laughs> JT and Martha Cook. And right. 1966 Chevrolet. You, you remember those trucks, don't you? Yeah, I've got one. And this truck has some history, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It's been in your family quite a while, hasn't For it? For a long time. <laughs> All he likes being ready to go is a set of side planks and a pig back there. All right. That's all he needs. That's hey, right. yeah. they look good in that. Oh, yes. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Coming up next, Kerrigan McCullough and Luke Gaines, also on the Myrtle Homecoming Court. There you go. Yeah. Just wave at them. They coming through there. Oh. Here comes a big old four-wheel drive. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sweet paradise. Wyndham, Wyndham Body Shop. Body Shop. Oh, Wyndham. Brown and Jenna Stewart. The body shop. Oh, me. We have announced our presence. <laughs> yes, town and country insurance. Uh, Junior Morris and Danielle Thompson. Oh, wave at them there. Hey, how you doing? Yes. Town Looks good. Insurance. I like that side by side. Yes. And next is the Union County Sheriff, Jimmy Edwards. Hey. 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 Yeah, he's all smiles. He that got reelected. Re doesn't it? <laughs> so he is all smiles. Yeah. That's definitely right. 
All right. He's done a good job. Coming up next, we've got Sam Taylor, who's the new District 1 Union County All right. Supervisor. Congratulations, got, Sam. Oh, look how decked out he is. He's got his all got lights on the truck besides Ooh. what's supposed to be on there. He looks like Santa on the back throwing out that candy. Oh, yeah. Definitely. If you need your if you need your if you need your driveway black top, just call Sam Taylor. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, Tina. That out, so. oh, yes. not. Coming up next, Mike Turner and Amy Turner. Yes, here are the colors, yes. In the big truck. Yeah. Very that, Christmas from the Turners. Yeah. yeah. Look at the bows on there. Yeah, that looks good. If you need trucking, he can do it, or he can take a bulldozer and make you anything you want. Oh, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. All next is uh, also at the Myrtle Homecoming Court, Paxton Gordon and Jade McDonald. Yay. Yes. There they are. The there you All right. Or the Myrtle Homecoming Court. Next up is... Carrie Mayer of Potts Camp in his 1956 Chevrolet. Ooh, that's sharp. Yeah, that's Looks my good. kind of car. Your kind of car, Alan. Yeah, I like that. Looks good. Looking nice. Coming up next, also on the Myrtle Homecoming Court, Sarah Kate Thompson. She's in a. She's in a James Bond special, oh, T-Bird. That's good in that James Bond that's a, special. That's a James Bond special. <laughs> 007. 007. Next is uh, going to be D. Parker and yeah. Seth Thompson. Yeah. And he looks like James Bond. Yeah. I uh, wouldn't go that far, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> oh, man, no, there, there's the Rough Rider right there. Yeah, next. Rough Rider. Rebecca Medlin, and the Mer also on the Myrtle Homecoming Court. Hey, Rebecca. Looking good. <laughs> yeah. She's got. Santa Claus is driving that car. Yeah, yeah it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, also on the Myrtle Homecoming Court is Miss Samantha Smith. Miss Samantha Smith, hello. Hey, Samantha. Wow. She's got. She's in a convertible too. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Right behind her is Brooke uh, Henderson, Junior Miss Union County. All right. She's got the canes and. Oh. Snowflakes. Uh, oh, lit up. That is Christmassy, I'll have to say. Brooke Henderson. Coming up next in the 2002 Trans Am is Robert and Chelsea Ch Childers. Oh, look. Hmm. Oh, yes. Now that one's decked out all red. Yeah. Real nice. Got the Christmas look. <laughs> Coming up next is the 530 crew. Ride for five and stop for 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What is that on the what back back doing? there? I don't know. I, it says Christmas uh, what on the back? Uh, written on there, Christmas, Christmas Myrtle or something. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Next is Hugh and Diane, uh, Mason and Liam Tate. Oh, I like that. Oh, that They've got the Sputnik antenna on there. Snowmen on oh, that one. Yes, here they come in the. They're in the car back here. That's. Yeah, we've got some four wheelers. Uh, four they're wheelers really decked out. Through. They are really rolling. Now uh, here's Hugh and Diane. Hugh and Diane Tate. Uh, yeah. Tate. Yeah. Throwing out the, the candy. Talk about Santa Claus. <laughs> oh yes, all decked out. <laughs> Need to borrow a little money to see old Hugh. Yeah. Oh, yes. And we got, following them, some more of that 530 crew. Uh, yeah. Drink for five and stop. Oh, this five. one is really <laughs> decorated. Yes. A lot of bows. Oh, and they are. That's some cool wheels right there. Cool wheels. My goodness, I've never seen one like this one. Oh, look at this. This one. is. Oh, this is advanced heating and air conditioning. Jason Kent owner. The technician is Jacob Gentry. All right. That looks oh, good. Yes. Be a good time to buy your air conditioner. Yes, look at all these nice little. <laughs> Got a whole crew of side by sides. Man, look at all of them. 
They can do some mud riding in those. And this is called really? the 530 Club? Is that what you said? 530 Club. The 530 yeah. Club. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely is. Uh-oh. Well, they've spent some time decorating these. They did. It's just one you put together. Uh, no, not in just the last minute. No, they spent some time. Oh. Okay. oh he's yeah, he's even got stereo to go. Yeah. Looking oh. Here. Mm -hmm. Advanced heating and air. Yes, Merry Christmas. Air. There we go. Nice Good. float. Nice float. He, he's even got his heater and air on the front there. Very good. <laughs> guess what? Guess what this is? <laughs> I would say that's the Myrtle Fire Department. That's a fire truck. Yeah, another fire truck. <laughs> I don't know how to call it. And this must be truck number seven. And coming in. That's an unusual uh, looking one. Also on the Myrtle Fire Truck, Santa uh, uh, is here. Whoa. And the here comes Santa Claus. Wow. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus Lane. Hello, Santa Claus. Here's the cheerleaders of the Myrtle Fire Department. <laughs> Listen to all that cheering. Oh, cheerleaders. Sounds good. I believe Santa's put, he's put on a little weight since last year. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And there's Ted Harris. <laughs> and, 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 and that's about hot chocolate time now, isn't it? Yeah. It is definitely hot chocolate time. Yeah. I think it was great. Mighty good. I'd like to really good. Thank everybody that participated. Hill Country Network done a good year, job. They said they had 15 last year, added 15 more this year. Yeah, 15 more next year will be even better. Yes, be. exactly. So this is uh, uh, this is the fifth annual Myrtle Christmas Parade. Hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we've enjoyed bringing it to you. Hope you have a great Christmas. Oh, a great Christmas. Christmas. Yes. You too, both of you have a great well, thank you. Thank you. I've got my list made out, so oh, okay. I'm texting it to everybody that knows me and loves me. Oh. So at least two people. It's kind of a short <laughs> list. <laughs> at least two people. <laughs> well, we do want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and, uh, of course, a Happy New Year. It'll be coming after that. And uh, if you can go to the parades, go. They're a lot of fun. We had a, a good crowd here, a good crowd here on hand for uh, this parade, and uh, we look forward to doing it again next year. Exactly. Don't forget what Christmas is about. That's right. That's right. Remember what Christmas is all about and make sure you celebrate that. That's right. So right. So right. All right. Thank you.